Coming through okay? Yeah, sometimes could you turn your eyes this way? Oh, okay. I was not uh, what you should be as a university student. My father died my first year, and that must have jolted me, because he and I were very close. And for reasons I can't explain, I, I, I responded to his death by getting on the subway and going out to my sister's high school. My sister was a senior in an all-girls high school out in Brooklyn, and asking the, the principal there if I could start a high school debating team. And I ended up pouring myself into working with them. So I was with them, it's not an exaggeration, 100 hours a week, because every day from 3 o'clock till 10 o'clock at night, and every Thursday we'd get in a bus that I had, a little van, and we would drive to Pittsburgh or to Boston or wherever there was the best tournament that weekend, and we wouldn't get back until Monday. And I never went to class. Fortunately, I had other scholarships because uh, I, I had been a good uh, student in high school. Uh, but I barely graduated from college. I had a 2.1 college grade point average. While you were sort of observing the, the growth of NYUAD, were there any moments that really surprised you or anything that you didn't expect to see? I never thought this would be easy. And so many people predicted it would fail, that I think we, those of us that put ourselves on the line for it, had to accept the fact that what we were doing might be very quixotic. One vivid moment was, I think it was in October, the very first year, you know, with the kids that graduated last year, we got very, very worried because there was a phenomenon that was happening where the place was far too obsessively academic. There was a great song in the reality show that year. Now, it wasn't written by the students because we had to do a reality show for them. From New York. But the students from New York had embedded themselves right. with NYU Abu Dhabi students, and they're very good at sensing. And, and there was one song, I don't think they sing it in the reality show anymore. I mean, I go every year, I don't remember it, called Life in a Fishbowl. And it was about everybody being afraid to be the first one to fail. You know, so much was being made about how special, and, and you know, we're not special, the students wanted to say, right? Mm -hmm. So I decided in October, I flew over specially to give them a dinner and tell them what Charlie had said to me, stop studying so much. And at that dinner, you know, I was going around the, the t you know, with the microphone doing my little whip up speech and everything. And at that dinner, three kids had books between their legs studying. And, you know, of course, I found them and I. I, I, uh, I yeah, 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 yeah. But, but so, so uh, you, you know, I, I think things have gotten a lot better since then. This was a question that was submitted to the Gazelle by another student. And she wanted to know how you saw the role of university president evolving and, and changing. It's going to be challenging times for education. I think more and more the role of the president is going to be to, to, to be out there advocating for the importance of education itself in a very aggressive way. If, if you're president, you have to be, in my view, uh, constantly noticing and storytelling about what the, what the what, what, what the university is, you know, what is its, uh, what, what's its mythos, what's its, what's its reason for being? And, and the interesting thing here, you know, to kind of observe and tell the story, is that in New York City, if you go out into any of the neighborhoods, even though New York City is not perfect by any means, okay, it has its fractions and its fissures and so forth, but you go into those neighborhoods, and no matter where those people came from, and 40% of the people in New York were born in other countries, they would say first, I'm a New Yorker. So there's something that's binding them. Now, if we can only extrapolate that to the world. So that's the Global Network University theory. It's just a story of New York City and NYU and being in the city. So I think the role of a president depends on the context in which you are, do you see the story that you tell as a university president changing, whether you're 
your campus? Oh, look, first of all, you know, we have this wonderful person coming in to succeed me. Okay, and he, he couldn't be more different from me. You know, a street kid from Brooklyn who didn't get out of the United States until he was 37 looks at the world, you know, under the aegis of a Charlie, and, you, and, and is a theologian and a lawyer. And, and you compare that with this extraordinary, elegant, top-flight chemist, you know, who comes up through Yale and Oxford and is a Brit, you know, looking at, well, that's a very different window. So he's going to notice different things. He's going to tell a story. He's going to be present in a different way. He's deeply committed to NYU Abu Dhabi and Global Network University. He's made that clear. The trustees made it clear that was what they wanted, but first thing when he walked into my office two weeks ago, for our first long conversation, we spoke a couple of times on the phone, and of course we knew each other before. First thing he said to me was, just, just, I want you to know that Global Network University is the future of higher education as far as I'm concerned. It's exactly right for NYU, and, and, and it's why I'm here. So he's, but he's going to have a very different take on it from the take I had, which is for the good. And I can't wait to see what he does with it and what you people do with it. Because you know what? I'm done with my shaping. You know, now I'm just now I'm just gonna watch and see, and I'm not gonna second guess anything. You know, and I'm very proud of the leg that I ran. You know, I, I, I wouldn't go back and try to do it better. You know, it wasn't perfect. You know, I could point to different little you know things that you know I would do differently if I had known then what I know now. But would I go back and try to do it again? No, sir. No, sir. Because it's worked out pretty well. What were some of the things you would have done differently? There were times where I was not clear enough with the deans that their involvement in every decision, which was real. I mean, we haven't made any decisions in the last 14 years that weren't made collectively by the deans as a kind of parliamentary cabinet. But I don't think that I coached them well enough that a consequence of that was that they had to take ownership and go out into the community and explain the rationales. Some of the deans did it intuitively and very well. Others, it didn't occur to them, I should have coached them better. There was the big building project in New York. You know, we knew when we decided that we would do that, that it was a great gift to the future of the university. I mean, here we could get the right, but not the obligation, with a new zoning envelope to build two million square feet in Greenwich Village in a way that didn't affect the heart of Greenwich Village. It's down on Houston Street. You know, it's not in the sacred part of the village. A building right, which is what we got, was this zoning envelope increase. That's worth two billion dollars. Two billion dollars. You know, our whole endowment is less than four billion. This is another two billion on top of that for our successors. Because we own the land already and we got it up zoned, and so you don't have to buy the land before you start building. Um, and, you know, we thought we were out in discussing it. It was a result of a faculty committee that said we need the space. But somehow or another, the fact that we were building it next to where the faculty lived was more uh, inflammatory than I think we realized it would be. Uh, I think those are the two big things that if, if I were to tinker but I wouldn't tinker. That's the big message. I wouldn't tinker. Yeah, you know, the butterfly effect. I'm, I'm very proud of what the team accomplished over these last 14 years. I think I was useful as a storyteller in their accomplishment. I was useful in attracting talented people. I mean, I've been pretty good at surrounding myself with talented people, so it's a really good team. Uh, so, I, you know, I feel fulfilled and joyful and eager to get to the next phase. Where do you see yourself five years from now? You know, I see myself on the NYU faculty. I, I, you know, I hope I'm still healthy. You know, I'm not young, so I, I, I always have to say health providing, inshallah, that's what we say here. But, uh, you know, as long as I'm healthy of mind and, and body, I see myself, just, you know, being a teacher, being what I was put on earth to do.